Hi. Sai Chan, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Also very good, thank you. Night time in India, I see. Yeah, it's night. It's night time. Yeah. <laughs> firstly, firstly, I want to thank you for accepting my invitation and uh, allowing me to talk with you. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, asking. Very nice. So, can you introduce yourself to my audience? Yeah, sure. My name is um, Nick B. Ponter and I'm English. I was born in England, um, Windsor, near London, to be specific, but I now live in Germany. And I've lived here since, oh, 2003 now. And I'm the author of Connor Jackson and the Memory Thieves. Okay. So, uh, you are an English teacher? Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm an author and um, I like to call myself a business English trainer. I'm not, I don't teach English in schools. I go to German companies and teach English or train English in the companies. So my profession is an English trainer. Okay, so what do you teach? Um, business English. So basically what I do is if you work in a company and you need English in your job, I would help you in your job to communicate in English. Telephoning, emailing, describing your company's products, whatever your tasks may be. How much experience do you have in this profession? Uh, 12 years now. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, that, you wrote that's a my book. main job. <laughs> that's your main job. So you, you, you became author when you started writing. Okay. Um, I started writing about seven years ago, but I, I work full time, so I couldn't write all the time. But my initial idea for my story was um, about seven years ago. And I spent about one year planning my story. My, I'm sure we'll talk about it in a minute, but my story is a fantasy story. And I spent about one year planning the fantasy world. Then I spent about four years writing, one year editing and correcting. And then I sent my book to publishers and was very happy to win a contract. And my book was published in November last year. Fantastic. What is the name of the book? I forgot. It's called Connor Jackson and the Memory Thieves. I'll maybe put it up in front there. There you go. Connor Jackson, Memory Thieves. What is it about? Well, it's a fantasy story about the secret world of moles. Now, I don't know if you have moles in India, but we certainly have them in Europe and they dig annoying tunnels and leave molehills in our gardens. And people generally don't like them, but they're nice little animals. And I always wondered why they need so much space below the ground. And I decided that there must be another world below the ground. And this is a story. And my main character is Connor Jackson. And he kind of, by accident, falls into the world of moles with three of his friends. And it's about the adventures of Connor Jackson below the ground. Um, it's, I would classify it as comedy fantasy. There are no swear words. There's nothing scary. Um, there's no violence. So it's a good traditional story. Um, and so far, everybody who's read it, they really, they really like the way I've written it, the style. There are plots. There are spies. There are secret missions because the moles have to go above the ground to get things they need for below the ground. So have you went into the ground? Have, sorry, say again. Have you went into the ground? Me personally, no, yeah. no, no. So how, uh, how you, you, how, yeah, you're saying uh, through your Connor Jackson. Am I Connor Jackson? Well, the book is written from the first person perspective. So from my perspective, so Connor Jackson, could I be Connor Jackson? I think the reader has to decide that. Okay, but uh, without uh, knowing about what is there inside the ground, uh, how can you say? Because it's fantasy and I have lots it's of fantasy, fantasy in my head. Okay, okay. <laughs> you must have fantasy as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it is I, just I your imagination. Up, I made up my own little world below the ground. It has shops and pubs and bars and restaurants and schools. Okay. So you are just imagining and you are making people who are reading this book to come into your world, your imagination. Exactly that. Exactly that. I have a story to tell and I will tell it to the reader. Are you um, good in pulling people to your world? I believe so, yes. Yes, I believe I've got a good writing style that makes people interested. And I like to write in short scenes, and the scenes change very quick, frequently. So the reader is always on the move. Is there any pictures in your book? Uh, no, only the front cover, I'm afraid. 
You can't okay. see it very well there, but there we go. Okay. So you're saying that once a reader involves in reading uh, reading your book, uh, they'll, they'll come into your imagination. I think very much so that the reader will have, get their own picture from what it's like below the ground. Yes, definitely, definitely. And, but that is basically what a writer should be doing, is getting people to think themselves about what it can look like. So have you read uh, uh, the, the responses that you got for the book? Yeah, very much. Um, on some of the big websites, which I won't mention, there are lots of reviews. Um, I've got 17 five-star reviews on one website, and the, the feedback is very, very good. Very, very good. That people like my writing style, people like the story, and they always had the feeling once they started reading it that they wanted more. Um, so I'll have to write another book, which I have already done, actually. So what is the intention behind writing this book? Telling about uh, moles. Moles, not mouse. Moles. Moles, moles, sorry. Moles, moles. Yes. What's the intention? Well, isn't that the same for anybody who writes? You want to tell a story. You have to have a story to tell. And you have to have imagination. And I have enough imagination. And I have a story to tell. And that's why I decided to put pen to paper and to tell my story to the world. And I'm certainly doing that at the moment because I'm we're, we're now chatting on Skype. Um, later this evening, I'm actually reading live to Iceland to Reykjavik University. Um, on Monday this week, I read my book to a school class in Canada. Um, next week, I'm reading to a school in Karachi in Pakistan. Um, the week after, I'm reading to a cafe in South Africa. So with video conferencing today, it makes it all possible to do readings live around the world to spread the word to let me tell my story yeah yeah so do you, yeah do you yeah. like reading as well what, what do you like to read i love reading i love writing both ah, as well what do you like to write i like to write about something which is happening around me uh, since uh, uh, from the morning uh, i uh, open my eyes uh, till the day uh, when I uh, till the day I go to sleep and close my eyes, whatever I see, I listen, I sense with. Uh, I mean, I observe with my senses. I'll just put uh, yeah. on on my website. I'll just put. Uh, I'll convert that uh, you know the the present into uh, into the into words, and I'll try to express it through uh, express it uh, through the words. So okay. I do That's just to uh, yeah just to express. No, not to impress or not to get any response, any expected response. So you you write for yourself. Yeah, just to express, just to just to throw it out. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. To put it, so you need to get your thoughts on paper. Yeah. But I want to know why why you want to write uh, uh, something which is not real. Because I think we live in a world where we have enough problems around us, and there are enough challenges. And I would like to take the reader out of this and into another world. It's obviously not real, but into another world of imagination where there is no fear, not, not real fear, where there's, um, there's no violence and no swear words. A very traditional story. Um, I don't know if you know the story, but uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, uh, no. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory from Roald Dahl, this was the type of story I read when I was a child, and I loved it. And I always imagined wanting to write a story like that when I was older. Okay. So, so that, that's really I want it. to pull people into another world, but I don't want to put fear into them. I want to make it a nice world. You're a nice person. I hope so. I try. <laughs> You're a nice person and good person. So only good people and uh, who wants to have only good, uh, good feeling uh, will read your book. But there are moral messages in my book. There are questions which the reader will have. What's good and what's bad? That, that, that is something which the reader will have to find out for themselves, maybe. Have you ever thought to go to, go to uh, go into the sky? Going to the sky? Yeah. What do you, what do you mean, going to the sky? Uh, in your imagination, you went uh, into the ground. Uh, ah, okay, I see what you mean. Oh. Um, I haven't thought of it yet, but maybe you've just given me another idea. Now, at the moment, my story is under the ground, but yet maybe in the future or maybe even in the sea, even. Yeah, yeah. 
then the next question of mine is the same in into yeah, the sea I, I, or I, into I, the water well into the water there's probably a world which even us humans haven't found and destroyed yet um, okay so you want to go everywhere uh, other than where a human is living um, i'm not sure about that yet I, i've planned four books. um i planned four books from the very beginning the first one is published the second one is finished but i haven't submitted it to publishers yet okay book number 3 is planned but not written yet and book number 4 is in there but all the four stories follow on from each other so you are already into english and you are very good in uh, explaining things right your profession is uh, uh, english thing, uh, business english teacher yeah exactly yeah so why why you wrote uh, a book uh, after 12 years why not uh, after one or two years because you are already into the same profession it is very easy for you to explain things right um because one day i woke up and i had this feeling i wanted to write so i did i can't <laughs> really explain why it was certainly not a feeling i had since childhood i liked reading and i liked the stories but i never had the feeling oh i really need to write but one day i woke up and i said to myself i'm going to write a book so i did okay so do you have a blog um not so much a blog no i'm very active on instagram um and you can just find me under nick b ponter facebook as well um uh, my author's site and i also have a an author's website www.nickponter.com and i've also got an active youtube channel i don't blog i haven't yet but i could okay so other than writing and uh, uh, uh teaching english what do you do um oh i've got lots of interests i like camping i like hiking trekking canoeing and i like traveling especially to southeast asia okay um, you you're now in india I, for 6 years of my life i lived 2 years in bangladesh and 4 years in pakistan and okay very close to mumbai as well you stayed in mumbai how was mumbai i loved it okay really nice. where where are you now I, i i didn't get which city you're in um i'm from telangana south india okay yeah so so humans do you observe humans yes do you write do you have a plan to write about them not yet but if i did if it would be at a soccer match not soccer not match. not observing the players but observing the people who watch the soccer match audience and i'm sure yeah, the yeah the, the spectators yeah exactly the audience and i'm sure if you were to do that in india it wouldn't be with soccer but it would be with cricket yeah cricket ipl and um i would write about the spectators watching the cricket the passion uh-huh. the anger the love you, you can you have a great voice you can also become a commentator maybe but i i also narrated my book okay well i did i i did it earlier this year and since august my book is available on itunes amazon and audible as an audiobook with uh, me narrating yeah you have a great voice that is why the reason Thank i wanted you. to ask if yeah. you go to my youtube channel um you just need to search nick ponter youtube you'll find me and uh, there's quite a few interesting little videos there so what are the things that people cannot find in other books and uh, that that they can find in your book that's a very difficult question what can they find in mind that they can well i i i can't answer that question because millions of books have been written and i can't say that what's in mind is different to other books that's i don't think that's possible um what i can say is what other people have told me is that the idea i've got of this comedy world below the ground is that nobody else has done it and what i've written is actually quite fresh and quite new and everybody who i've spoken to so far said they like that about the book because it's completely new fantasy okay i you, have try, you have to try it yourself say fantastic i'll definitely do that and i'll uh, make people to uh, go through uh, your book for sure and if you have a, if you have a good audience um maybe i could do a live reading for you on skype or zoom for you and your friends definitely we'll do it uh, very soon this i wanted to just uh, uh, give a, a promo to the people so this very is this is completely 
yeah this is very new this is very new uh, talking about moles a living thing and uh, going into uh, under the ground and uh, telling about something uh, you know i never seen any author i did videos with a lot of authors but this is completely new that's what other people have told me yeah so maybe i can maybe you can inspire people in india to read my book they will watch this video for sure oh i hope yeah. so yeah very much <laughs> Do you have anything to say at the end uh, to the people who watches this video and to to my audience? Well, um, yeah. Um, firstly, um, thank you very much, Sai, for inviting me here. It's really kind of you. And for everybody else, enjoy the world of fantasy, but get get away from your daily routines. Get your nose in a book and read something new, and get yourself away from um, everyday trivialities. And in my book, I think you can. emerge yourself and get away from that and enjoy a good light-hearted fast read and you can read it in paperback ebook or listen to my voice um, if you like it on audible or as an audiobook there will be people who will be watching this video and who don't have job and who are trying to get job uh, in mnc company so what kind of english uh, they have to learn how they can learn and how they can improve their english skills can you give some tips yeah to improve english skills if if you haven't got the opportunity to work with a teacher or a trainer as much as you can read as much as you can watch on the internet learn business vocabulary make sure your emailing skills are at a good level so you can write professionally but it, the two important things are vocabulary and self confidence you are allowed to make mistakes everybody makes mistakes in language and it's okay don't be scared about making mistakes that's my main message thank you nick thank you for giving your valuable time and uh, uh, coming and talking about something you're welcome it's lovely to meet you and i hope to see you again can i put this video on my youtube channel and uh, all my social networks and on internet with your permission please feel free and may i share it as well yeah you can yeah <laughs> thank you please feel free yes you have my permission <laughs> yeah th- sorry for making you wait for a long time don't worry that's fine <laughs> yeah take care go on keep writing keep inspiring people i'll do that and you you keep on push, pushing and promoting us authors we need people like you so thank you i will thanks thanks a lot